This is one of the most popular questions when it comes to backtracking. You are given an array of unique integers and you have to determine all the possible subsets that you can form using this array. I am talking about the problem subsets on lead code. Okay, so backtracking is a very good hint. But how do you identify which kind of problems can be solved using the backtracking algorithmic paradigm? Let us have a look into it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, a place where we explore the life of technology and make programming fun and easy to learn. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Next, I will tell you how to look at this problem structure and how to break it down. So you can identify that, okay, I need to apply the backtracking algorithmic paradigm over here. Going forward, we will start solving the problem and also do a dry run of the code so that you understand how all of this actually works. Oh, and by the way, if you're new to backtracking, I would highly recommend you to check out my previous video on backtracking first. You can find the link in the description below. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's first try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. So you are given an array of unique integers. Notice the term unique because these kind of key terms can differentiate how you are approaching the problem. So given this array, you have to return all the possible subsets that you can form using this array. Now the question has to be asked, what is a subset actually? A subset is nothing but just a smaller set that you can derive from a larger set and this set can have one or all of the elements from the array or you can just pick any element that you like. Let us look at some test cases to understand what does it mean. So for example, I am given this array, right? And it has the elements one, two and three. Now what kind of subsets you can make? For this particular test case, you can have a empty array. So this is also a perfectly valid subset. You can have a subset that only have one element. You can have subsets that have two elements, one, two, two, three, or one, three. And you can also have one more subset that have all the elements. So these are all the possible subsets that you can have. Notice that you cannot have three comma one. Basically these two subsets will be same. So they are not two different subsets. So this entire set, of all the subsets is called the power set. And given this problem, you have an array, you need to find out all of these subsets. Now, there is no definite order in which you have to output them, but it is guaranteed that you have to output all of these subsets. For example, let us take up one more test case. You have test case number two, where we have a smaller array that have only one element and that is 42. So how many subsets you can make? The first subset would be an empty set, you're not picking any element. And in the second subset, you pick the only element that was available to you. So for this array, you can only have two subsets or the power set. So this will be your answer. Now, if you have understood the problem statement correctly, feel free to try it out on your own. Otherwise, let us see how we can go about solving it. To start understanding the problem, let us take up a sample array. You can see that this array has all the unique integers, right? And you are required to find out all the possible subsets, correct? For a moment, forget about the fact that you have to write code for this problem. Just try to approach this problem in a logical way. Your first question should be, okay, can I somehow calculate how many total number of subsets will be even possible? That is very easy, right? So either you will have one or you will not have one, right? So you have two choices over here. Similarly, either you will have two in the subset or you will not have two. So once again, you have two choices. Similarly, for three and four, either you will have a three or not a three. Either you will have a four or you will not have a four. So each of these numbers also have two choices each. So that gives you a total of 16 possible combinations. This simply means that this array will have a total of 16 possible subsets, right? Now what you can do is, you can start forming these subsets, correct? So how can you go about doing that? Okay, first of all, what you can do is, I can create a case where I'm including one. So when I'm including the number one, I can start making subsets one, two, three, one, three, four, right? And so on. Basically, 
all of these subsets will definitely have the number one in it, right? Going forward, you can start approaching this problem further. What you can do is, okay, now I will start generating test cases where two is always present. So you can have your subsets like two, three, two, four, two, one, and so on, right? In all of these cases, two will always be present, right? Similarly, you can create more cases where you will always have a three and you will have more cases where you will always have a four, right? And then what you can do is you can start to remove any duplicates that you found and voila, you will find all of your subsets, right? So just try to think what we are doing over here. First of all, we try to get all the cases where you will always have the element one, right? Once we are done with all of this, you will go back and this time you will try to find all the cases where you have the element two, right? Once you have found out all the cases with two, you will go back again. And this time you will find out all the cases that will have the element three. So what are you doing every time? Every time after generating some sample data, you are going back and then you're generating new sample data, then going back again and then you're generating new sample data. So this is what tells you that this problem can be approached using a backtracking algorithm paradigm. Every time after generating some sample data, if you have not reached the result, go back and then try again with some new sample data. So based on this, we can come up with a backtracking approach to solve this problem. Let us try to take one more sample test case and this time I am taking a array of three elements. So first of all, your question should be how many subsets I can make. So that will be simply two to the power of n, right? Two multiplied by two multiplied by two and that is equal to eight. So we are expecting eight subsets over here, correct? So how do you go about finding these eight subsets? you have to start somewhere, right? So, okay, I will start off with an empty set. We have no elements right now, correct? Remember our approach where we were deciding either we should have the element one or we were not picking the element one, correct? So we can split up our scenario into two cases. One of the cases will be where we pick the element number one and one of the cases will be where we don't pick any element. Once we pick the element one, we will get a subset like this one right and over here we will get an empty set again correct but this problem has not finished yet you have more elements to pick from right the next element that you have to pick is the element number two so once again at each state you have to make a decision either you pick the element number two or you don't pick the element number two so for each of these scenarios either i am picking two or i am not picking two in this case also, either I'm picking the element two or I'm not picking the element number two. And this will start giving me new subsets. I will get one comma two over here and I will get only one over here. In this place, I will get the element two and once again, I will get an empty subset over here, right? So you can see how we are forming all of these subsets, but the solution is not over yet. We have one more element remaining, that is element three. So once again, each of these states will have two choices. And in each of the states, either you pick the element three or you don't pick. You pick the element three and you don't pick. And then you can start generating these subsets. When you don't pick a three, you get one comma two. In the next case, when you pick a three, you will get one comma three. And if you don't pick, you will be remaining with one. Similarly, if you pick, you get two comma three a two over here, a simple three over here, and then an empty set over here. So now you see, I don't have any more elements to pick from. I have traversed my entire array, right? And if you notice, these are all the possible subsets that you can make from this original array. And if you count them, they are eight in total, right? So this also proves that you have found out all of these eight subsets. So what you're doing over here, every time you're starting with an empty array and then you select element number one. So in all of these cases, it is guaranteed that element one will always be there. If you're not picking element one, what do you do? You backtrack, right? 
and then you will find all the cases where element 1 is not present and this property is true throughout your state space tree correct for example if i look at this smaller tree then all of these cases on the left will be the cases when i have picked 2 and all of these cases on the right will be the cases when i am not picking 2 so somehow you can be sure that okay i am covering all of these cases i would recommend that you take a little pause over here and look at this tree for a moment try to understand what is happening at every time you are going back and then doing the same thing again right so this implies recursion if you are understanding what is happening over here correctly then writing the code for this is really really simple so whenever you are ready let's start writing the code for this on the left side of your screen you have the actual code to implement this solution and on the right i once again have a sample array that has all unique integers and this is passed in as an input parameter to the function subset right oh and by the way this complete code and the test cases are also available on my github profile you can find the link in the description below moving on with the dry run of the code what is the first thing that we do first of all we create a result list so i have my result list with me that will store all of the possible subsets right and now what we can do is we can start to backtrack from the beginning what we're going to just do is we will pass in this result list an empty array list to start off things just as in a previous slide we started somewhere right we started off with an empty array correct so we pass in this empty array we pass in our original array and we pass in the starting point because we have to start from the beginning right so now let us take a look at this backtrack function what is actually happening inside over here so what we just do is we take our result set and then we will start appending all of the subsets that we find one step at a time so you can see that when this loop starts what will happen is we will append this empty set to our all the subsets correct and do you remember what we were doing in our previous slide we took each element one by one either we were including one or we were not including one we were including two or we were not including two so what we do over here we start a for loop that will go from the first element up to the last right and for every element either we include it or we don't include it how does this work so let us consider the case where we are including the first number so when we include the first number my subset becomes like this one correct and do you remember what we were doing we were again backtracking we were going back to look at the cases where we were not including the one so forget about the recursive part right now what i'm going to do is i will go into my next part and i am looking at the case where i removed the first element so right now i will not have my first element in here what will happen in the next iteration in the next iteration this loop will run again and this time we will include the element 2 over here correct so once again i will start generating cases where i get 1 comma 2 and i will not include a 2 after the recursive call ends over here also i will add a 2 and i will not add a 2 so you can see that with every iteration each of these subsets will get added to my result list and as your loop progresses you will start to get more and more cases over here right and this result list will keep on expanding once all of the elements have been traversed this loop will end and you will exit out of it and then you can simply return your result list that will contain all of your subsets to calculate the time complexity each element could be included or not right hence 2 to the power n and you have a total of n elements right so the time complexity of this solution is order of n multiplied by 2 to the power of n and the space complexity of this solution is order of n that is because you are just taking up the stack space to store n elements i hope i was able to simplify this problem and its solution for you as per my final thoughts i just want to say that whenever you approach any programming problem as soon as you understand what is it trying to say the problem becomes very very easy for example in this problem as soon as you were able to identify that okay i have to apply the backtracking algorithm then 
writing the code became so much simpler, right? Just break down your process into different steps and write the code for it. It's that simple. What other problems did you face where you can apply this backtracking algorithm? Now, when you know about how to solve them, can you come up with a better solution? Tell me everything in the comment section below. What problems did you face? I would love to help you out and discuss all of them with you. You would be also glad to know that a text-based explanation to this content is available on the website studyalgorithms.com, a pretty handy website for your programming needs. You can find the link in the description below. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such video where I can simplify programming for you. Also, let me know what other trending problems do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.